Hello everyone, this is Walter Fate, and I'm back to talk about more horrible dating stories from Reddit. That's right, we're returning to Reddit Dating Hell to read about some of the worst dates the internet can remember. Partially because I can't find any nice guy stories I like anymore. Anyway, let's get right into the fun with more terrible dates from Reddit Dating Hell. TLDR, he picked his nose during our lunch and proceeded to eat what came out of it. I wish I was lying when I tell this story. I never thought this would happen on any date I'd go on. Some background info. As a gay high school student, dates are something that definitely don't occur so often. It's difficult to find boys that are openly attracted to other boys. And even when you do find some, you probably don't like them in a romantic way or vice versa. So when I was able to actually find a guy that I liked and had him like me back as well, I was ecstatic. We met in school and became friends pretty quickly. This boy, who we'll just call John, was kind of dorky. John was into a lot of anime and video games. Personally, I'm not really into anime, but we bonded over video games a lot. He was a little socially awkward sometimes, but never anything too major. I found it cute. After a few months of just being friends, I grew the balls to ask him out on a date, and he said yes. We made plans to hang out at a local tourist area in our city. It's filled with stores, restaurants, casinos, and other things. On paper, it was a cute little first date for us to go on. We were going to go shopping and out to eat and have an amazing time. I remember preparing myself before the date and being so nervous. A date is such a rare thing to happen for me. So I arrive at the place and he's there waiting. We greet each other and chat for a little bit and then decide to explore. We go through a couple of stores and I was having fun for the most part, but things felt a little different. Our conversations weren't really flowing so smoothly. Neither of us didn't really know what to talk about, but this was probably just because it was a first date and we're both nervous, so I brush it off. Things are pretty normal so far. We go into one store to look around for a bit and maybe buy something. After a few minutes of exploring, I find something I want to buy and we head to the register. After I pay, I start to head for the exit, but then John and the cashier start to talk to each other. I believe John and her have met before. They begin to talk about anime shows that they watched and were recommending each other's shows and manga to read. I didn't mind at first, but their conversation lasted longer than anticipated. The store was relatively empty, so the cashier didn't need to worry about other customers. I stood there silently and felt a little awkward, because I couldn't really engage in their conversation. Neither of them really tried to include me in on it. They talked for a good couple of minutes before another customer finally came to the register and they had to end their conversation. Me and John left the store and then decided to go eat. We go to a fast food restaurant and get ourselves some food, and decided to go sit and eat outside at some patio tables. While chatting, I remember bringing up a video game I was really passionate about. I mentioned how my favorite part about the game was its unique story. With that as the topic, John attempts to talk about it, but clearly doesn't know much about the game and has not played it. This is fine, but he tries to play it off like he's also into the game, and when trying to talk about the story, he completely butchers it to where I can tell he's coming up with stuff on the spot. In some weird way, it was flattering, because at least he was trying to impress me, but it'd be better if he just didn't lie about his interest. After that awkward moment, the most unpredictable, disgusting thing happens. While I was eating, I look up at him and see him full-on picking his nose. I just froze and kept on watching, because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He then proceeds to move his finger to and inside his mouth and eats whatever came out of his nose. Mind you, he's in high school. The entire time, he wasn't looking towards me, so I assume he thought I wasn't looking, and that he was being sneaky. But oh, did I see. After that, I felt disgusted. I didn't know what to think of the situation. It was so weird and nasty and out of nowhere. I ended the date early and said my goodbyes to John. Afterwards, he texted me and told me he had a good time and wanted to hang out again soon. We did not ever hang out again. He would occasionally text me and we would chat, but things weren't the same. I didn't feel like I liked him anymore after that. Luckily, we didn't have any other classes together, and he eventually just stopped talking to me altogether. Alright, so the whole thing sounds pretty awkward, but it's a high school date, so it was probably going to be awkward. I'm sure most of it was okay, really, but this picking his nose thing is something entirely different. This is something you'd get made fun of for in grade school, let alone high school. And he also did this while they were eating. I don't know how you can manage to not act like this at school, but think it's okay to do on a date. Hopefully he was even able to figure out what he did wrong. Hopefully. Let's read another one. TLDR, she listed off every single man she's ever slept with during the car ride. So this was at least 15 years ago, before I met my wife. I met a young woman in a chat room, Yahoo I believe, told you it was a while ago. And she seemed cool and pretty cute. 
brunette, glasses, all the things I tend to like in women. She was a few years younger than me. I was in my late 20s, and I know for a fact that she was 23. I knew she lived on the other side of the city. I'm a west sider, she's an east sider, sort of. This was prior to Google Maps on the phone, so all I had was her directions on how to get to her house, and she was a little sparse on how long of a drive it would be once I got to the other side of the city, which was already a 30 minute drive from my house. It ended up being an additional 45 minutes. So I got there to pick her up, and she wasn't yet ready, so I spent the time talking to her dad, who showed me his workshop and was just a really cool guy. Why is it when you really like the parents, you don't get along with the person you're dating? She had to go to work later, so the plan was for us to get some food, kind of hang out, and then I was going to drop her off at work. Okay, cool. She then proceeded to list the circumstances surrounding every single guy she'd ever slept with, at one point saying, I'm only 23, but I've slept with more men than years I've been alive. Now, I'm no prude, and I don't really care how many people you've slept with before me, but I don't really want to know the number, and I really don't want to know the details. Like, she of the man, oldest was 65, or his cock size. She wanted to eat at Taco Bell, so I went through the drive-thru, paid for our meal, and dropped her off at work an hour before her shift was about to start. She wasn't the worst, by far, but I wanted to start off easy and then get into the more interesting stories as time goes by. Yeah, I agree with the author. I don't particularly care how many partners she's had, but I don't want to hear about it on the first date. Or any date, probably. This might work for her just because of how thirsty some men are, but really it's just as weird as these guys we see in stories that won't stop telling people they're a virgin. I'll never understand that one either. Okay, moving on. Here's a good one. My date's mother was irrationally hateful towards soldiers. TLDR at the bottom. This all happened about four years ago. I had been single for nearly six months and finally decided that I was ready to get back into the game again. I downloaded Tinder, made up my profile, and within a while I had a few matches. One of which caught my eye, a 23-year-old woman by the name of Haley, with beautifully flowing red hair in most of her pics. I found her cute, super attractive, and a 100% match for me. We start texting and hit it off extremely well. We liked a lot of the same things, my cheesy pickup lines made her laugh, and we agree to go to the local mall the next day. When we meet up, it was even more better, as her voice was music to my ears and her pictures did nothing to show how much of a beautiful person she was. She laughed and giggled at my corny jokes, called me handsome a few times, and even bought her own food when we went for a bite to eat. By all accounts, she was my dream girl. Nearing the end of the date, she inquired about what I do for a living. I told her I work at a local grocery store while also doing part-time soldiering as a reservist at the town garrison. At the mention of the last part, she kind of cringed and said in a worried tone, Ooh, you're a soldier? I said yeah and asked what was wrong. She said her mom had something against them. Whether it was personal or she just didn't like the idea of violence and war, I'll never know. She said that we were getting along great and didn't want this to fall through, so as long as I don't mention my occupation to her mother, everything would be alright. We went on three other dates before she wanted to introduce me to her family, which consisted of her mom and kid brother. Her little bro didn't bother us and mostly kept to his room, while her mother eagerly grilled me with questions. What I did for a living, where my family was from, etc. I did my best to keep my reservist work to myself. At one point she asked if I had Facebook and I told her I did. She then whipped out her phone and started searching for me on the site. My dumbass had totally forgotten that I had posted on there many pictures of the military stuff I did. I was and still am proud of my service to the Leaf. And upon her finding my Facebook profile, her face became twisted in anger. This isn't you, is it? She asked, showing me a picture of myself in full battle rattle. Haley looked at me with worry, and finally cluing into things, I reluctantly said, Yes, it's me. It was almost like a switch had been flicked in the mother's brain. She went from somewhat pleasant to full raging psychopath, going on and on about how I dared to step foot into her home and threaten her children with my militaristic influence. All while Haley stood between us, giving me a sorry glance every so often. The mother concluded her rage by saying she would not be having a murderer in her house, and proceeded to threaten me with a spaghetti ladle, the first thing she could grab, and telling me to leave immediately and never talk to Haley again. An hour later, while I was home, Haley texted me and apologized profusely about her mother, but followed it up by saying, There really is no point in us trying. My mother hasn't stopped ranting about you or how dumb I was to trust you since you left. I had fun these past few weeks, and I don't conform to my mother's beliefs, but like I said, there's no point. So that's my story on how my service to my country essentially ruined a potentially perfect relationship for me. Yay! TLDR, I met a girl who was perfect for me, but her mother absolutely hated me, just for the fact that I was a soldier, so things ended before they even began. 
You may know this if you've been here for a while, but I'm a veteran. It was only a few years and I got out over 10 years ago because I'm old, so it's no big deal, but everyone was so supportive of soldiers that it's hard for me to imagine a scenario like this. It's like she just found out he's a rapist or something. And I find it hard to believe that she really thinks he's that dangerous if she's threatening him with a fucking ladle. Well, either way, fuck this woman. Who is she to shut down someone on behalf of her 23-year-old daughter based on nothing but his job? A job that most people in this country fully support. My condolences to the author on losing his dream girl, though. Make sure to let me know what you think about these dates in the comments. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to my subscribers, and if you're new here and enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. All those good things that help me out. I'd also like to thank my generous patrons who help me deal with the fact that YouTube doesn't monetize my videos anymore. I'm just too offensive for life, I guess. I'll shout out patrons by name in the next video, cause it should get more views anyway. Okay, so I just took like the longest break I've ever taken, I think. Reddit content has been pretty sparse, but I'm going to try to come up with some more things to cover. Tomorrow is going to be a nice guy video, but feel free to leave any suggestions for new topics in the comments. I am looking for more series, and we'll be going back to Kevin Haven soon, if anyone remembers that guy. Thanks for your understanding, but we're going to be getting back to work now, and I'm also hoping to stream tomorrow. If not, it'll be the day after. I also want to thank the authors and the subreddit. On a more somber note, I'd like to say rest in peace to Erika. If you are having suicidal thoughts, well, don't talk to me about it, I'll probably make things worse. Uh, here's the number to call, just a little PSA here. Other than that, have a great day everyone, and don't let your mom chase off your potential relationships, especially if you're an adult.